Okay, what's the chance of something like this showing up on the SAT? Let me just skip over. It's not the end of the world. Guy, it is actually the end of the world. It's gonna show up. You're gonna miss a What's going on guys? Welcome back to the part two of the parable series. If you haven't seen part one, follow the link up there. Watch the part one because that's just how numbers work. You watch one and then you go into two. If you haven't seen part one, well, the stuff that we're gonna go over here is gonna make sense but you're essentially gonna be missing the other half of the parabola question because part two is just half of the parabola question and second, the other half is on part one. So I highly recommend you go watching parabola part one first. So as I mentioned in the previous video, part two is going to be solely based on what you need to know for vertex for the parabola. So the first type you need to know is going to be how to find the vertex of a parabola. Let's look at this question. In the quadratic equation above, A is a non-zero constant. And the graph of the equation in the x-y plane is a parabola with a vertex C and D. What is going to be the value of D, right? So we're looking for D and what is D? D is the y-coordinate of vertex, right? So how do we find y-coordinate of the vertex? We find the x-coordinate, put it into the equation, and the result is going to be your y-coordinate of the vertex. Which means to answer this question to find out what the y-coordinate is, we need to know what the x-coordinate of the vertex is, okay? So how do we find x-coordinate of vertex? There's actually two ways for this. First one is going to be minus b over 2a. And if you do that, it gives you the x-coordinate of the vertex. And second method is going to be average of two roots, okay? Finding the average allows you to get the midpoint of two roots, okay? Here's why the second method works. If you look at a parabola, the vertex is always going to be in the middle of the two roots, okay? Exactly in the middle, okay? And they are going to share the same x point, x coordinate. So how do we find the x coordinate? of a vertex you can just find the midpoint of two two of these points right here and you know where that is and that is going to be the same as the x coordinate of the vertex so how do we find it uh with two roots what you do is you add root one plus root two and then you divide by two that gives you the x coordinate does that make sense awesome so for this question which method are we going to use you could stick to the first method where you have to distribute everything and find out exactly what B and A are, but that just takes a lot of work. So we're just gonna try the second method, which is a method not many people know about. So where are the roots for this question? Well, let's see, equation is y is equal to a x minus two, x plus four. So your zeros or your roots are going to be at x is equal to two and minus four. And what we have to do with this is we have to find the midpoint of it. And how do we find midpoint? We add two up, r1 plus r2 divided by two, which means it's going to be two plus minus four divided by two, which is minus two divided by two, which is minus one, okay? So minus one is going to be the midpoint. And our midpoint is going to be x coordinate of the root of the vertex, okay? So what do we do with the x-coordinate of the vertex? Well, here's what we do. We find the x-coordinate of the vertex and then we plug it in to the equation. And then the result is going to be the y-coordinate of the vertex, which is exactly what we're looking for in this question. So what do we do? We just plug it in. y is equal to a x minus two, x plus four. Plug in minus one, it's gonna be a minus one, minus two, and minus one plus four, okay? And that's gonna give you a minus three and plus three, which is going to be nine a. That's going to be the y coordinate of the vertex, which means our answer is going to be a. Does that make sense? Good. So what you wanna know for vertex question is how to find the x coordinate of the vertex, because if you know the x coordinate, you can find out the y coordinate of the vertex. And how do you find x coordinates? Two of these methods. Make sure you remember those two, okay? Let's go to the second types. So the second type is going to be about vertex form. Let's look at this question. Which the following is an equivalent form of the function f above in which the minimum value of the f appear as constant or coefficients, okay? So we want to represent the minimum value of the function as constant or coefficient. Then ask, let's ask ourselves, what's the minimum value? Well, if you, look at the, if you look at the equation, it's a parabola, right? And parabola looks something like that. 
and the minimum value is going to be you, your vertex, right? So the question is asking us to represent the vertex as constants or coefficients, right? And to do that, we use the vertex form, okay? So vertex form looks something like this. Y is equal to A parentheses X minus H square plus K, okay? If you see this H and K right there, they are going to be the coordinates of your vertex, okay? H is going to be the X coordinate, Y is going to be the K coordinate. Sorry, K is going to be the Y coordinate. So let's say our vertex was like two and three, then your equation would look something like a y is equal to a x minus two squared plus three. And it this equation represent where the vertex is in terms of a constant. Okay, therefore this putting in the vertex form accomplishes this goal of representing minimum value as constant or coefficients. Okay, so what we're going to do is put this equation into a vertex form and that should give our give us our answer. So vertex form is going to write here y is equal to a x minus h squared plus k. And which one looks like that among the choices? Well, a doesn't look like that. B doesn't look like that. C and D kind of look like that. Okay, and the only difference is let me just erase this real quick. And the only difference between the two is the X coordinate of the vertex and the Y coordinate of the vertex, right? So as long if you can find out what the X coordinate is, you should be able to tell which one's the right answer. And how do we find the X coordinate of the vertex? Well, as we mentioned in the previous video, you just do minus B over 2A, which means we need to know what B and A are. So we're going to expand this e equation right there. So if you expand it out, you get X squared plus 2X minus 24. Okay, which means our B is going to be two. So minus two over two A, which is one, which means it's gonna be minus two over two, which means our X coordinate of the vertex, which is H is going to be minus one, which means our equation will look like D because if you plug in minus one into the equation, it's gonna be Y is equal to A X minus H, which is minus one square plus K which is a x plus one squared plus k and it has a plus in there. So minus doesn't work. So C is out. D is going to be your answer. OK, so if the question is asking you to represent the minimum value as constant or coefficient, always put it in the vertex form because that's what vertex form does represent the minimum or maximum or the vertex as constant or coefficient. OK, let's go to the next type. So this is similar to the previous one, but it's a little bit different. Let's look at this. The equation above represents a parabola, okay? Yeah, square, parabola, same thing. In the xy plane, which of the following is equivalent forms of the equation displays the x-intercepts of the parabola as constant or coefficient, okay? So we want it to represent constant or coefficient, but what do we want to represent? The x-intercept. We want to represent x-intercept as constant or coefficient. And if the question is asking you to represent X intercept as constant or coefficient, what you do is you put it in the standard form. And standard form is just another fancy name for a factored form. Okay. So if you just factor it, you're going to be able to get the answer. So if you factor it, X squared minus six, eight plus eight, it is X minus four and X minus two, right? So, this is going to be your answer, which means choice D is going to be our answer. But let's take a step back and how see how this represents the X intercepts as the constant or coefficient. Remember from the part one where I said X intercept is just where the Y is equal to zero, because if you look at the parabola where they intercept the X axis is when Y is equal to zero. OK, so how do we find these two points? You just set Y is equal to zero and look for X. So set it equal to zero your equation will look something like x squared minus 6x plus 8 is, <laughs> that's terrible, 8, 8 is equal to 0, right? And to find the value of x that makes the equation equal to 0, you just factor it, x minus 3, sorry, x minus 4, and x minus 2, okay? That means our 4 and 2 are going to be roots slash x intercepts, right? And how does the factor form does that? It represents four and two as constants. Okay. Just by looking at this equation right there, we can know what the roots are or what the X intercepts are. So if they ask you to represent X intercept as constant or coefficients, just put it in the standard form, which is the factored form. 
Okay, so that's going to be the three types of vertex question you should know for the parabola question on the SAT. So make sure you can really recognize these questions because these are such a simple question like the last two that we just went over, constant or coefficients, constant or coefficients, it's minimum value or just x-intercepts. And you just put it in the standard form or the vertex form. That's it. That's simple as that. So if you memorize the formula and just put it in that form, you're going to get a couple more questions right that easily. A lot of mistakes that students make when they're studying for the SAT is they look at something and if they don't understand it, they go like, okay, what's the chance of something like this showing up on the SAT? Let me just skip over. It's not the end of the world. That it is actually the end of the world. It's going to show up. You're going to miss a question and you're going to regret it so much. Don't do that. Trust me. A lot of people have done that and you don't want to be the next one doing it. So this video probably gave you a good idea of what to expect for practice questions, how to recognize them, how to approach them, and how to solve them. However, if you want to go a step further and master everything about parabola questions to guarantee that you're not going to miss any more in your life, then I highly recommend you go to a link in the description box down below where it takes you to a private lecture to parabola questions. There's also going to be a worksheet outlining exactly what you need to know, and you can follow along and solve it along with me with the video so you understand everything easily. And afterward, there's going to be a set of parabola vertex question testing to see if you really understood the materials. If you can solve all those questions, you are going to be set. And that's going to be for today's video, guys. If you guys liked this video, if you guys found this video helpful, make sure you smash the like button. And if you want to see more of this content, make sure you subscribe to the channel because new videos Monday, Wednesday, Friday, outlining exactly what you need to know for the SAT. And lastly, if there is something you want to see next in this channel, make sure you leave it in the description box. I keep on saying that. Comment box down below and, and I'll make a video on it next. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. On my body, and I know this shit don't impress you. So, no bullshit, girl, nothing extra. Girl, I ain't playing games. I wanna take your whole.